So I have another wonderful book uh, that I just received that I want to tell the world about. It's Regina of Warsaw, and it's from Jerry Spieler. And I'm so honored to have you with me today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So tell everyone a little bit about what this, this, this book is about. It's based on my grandmother's Regina Anisevich life. Uh, it's her, basically, it's her story. It's not a memoir because I wasn't there in 1910 in Warsaw to be a witness to the conversations. But she really had, she had a tough life. She had an amazing life. Her story was unusual. And eventually I decided that I really wanted to tell her story. So it's historical fiction. So all the facts are right, but her story is there. And it's how she had the guts to get out of Eastern Europe when she did. Had she not, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. Right. <laughs> um, lost a lot of her family to the Holocaust. She was one of six siblings. Uh, her sister also got out. Uh, and went to France. The rest of the family, unfortunately, died in Bergen-Belsen concentration camps and the Warsaw Ghetto. Regina Anisevich was the second of the oldest of, of six siblings and a tough, I would call her a tough cookie. <laughs> mm -hmm. She had a mind of her own. She was not interested in getting married and having babies. She became a translator. She learned Russian she spoke Yiddish and she spoke Polish. She worked for, at that time, interesting side note, there was a small feminist movement in Eastern Europe and in Poland at the turn of the century. Women were starting to work outside the home. Who knew? Right. I found out from a wonderful professor, Robert Blaubaum from West Virginia University, who studied Eastern Europe at the time, and by researching this book, I found him and I found out about that, which was really a surprise. Um, so she saw a lot of the information coming through this, this organization about the growing anti-Semitism and violence. And she and her sister traveled, her sister was working in a textile mill in Bialystok and Regina, went there to see her and there was a pogrom, which is a violent raid. And the Russian word is pogrom. And they witnessed that. And fortunately they were okay, but seeing this horrific violence raised her sensitivity much higher than others who did not see that. And when she saw this building in Eastern Europe, she said, we have to get out of here, we have to leave. And everyone said, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's not bad. You're you're overreacting. She said, no, I'm not. Now, of course, we know she's not. Mm -hmm. um, but she, at the age of 18, left Warsaw with a little baby boy, my Uncle Louis, by herself, got on a train to go and, and traveled through France and then Scotland to come to this country. Think about Picking up right now with whatever you've got, getting on a train to go to a foreign country where you don't even know the language, you don't know anybody, you're all alone. Mm -hmm. That was that was this woman. Um, and I, you know, grew up with Grandma Regina. My mother and her sisters were raised in a Jewish orphanage in Los Angeles. You know, I when I talk about that, to me, it was, well, that was just my history. That was my mother's and her sister's history. I never thought much about it. When I would tell people that, they go, oh, my God, this had to be horrible. I said, no, actually, it was a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people were coming into the United States at the turn of the century for violence, not just Jews, but other people as well, because Eastern Europe was becoming very, very violent. And... They wanted these kids to have a place where they could have their food and their medicine because their parents came here with nothing. They were escaping the violence of the country. We see that 
hear people escaping violence, looking for a better life, looking for a safe life. So all these, eventually grandma was in Chicago and then Los Angeles and Jewish Family Services said, we need to take care of these kids and you don't have the money to take care of them. So my mother and her sisters were raised in this orphanage. So that's just a, a very brief overview of you know what was going on. There's a whole lot in between. Mm-hmm. I'll stop now. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to tell this story? I think finally, when I realized, you know, and looking at what had been written about World War II and about her life that was so different and who she was and her decisions and how she survived. Um, She left Warsaw, she got married again in France and ended up in Chicago where she had the three other kids. Grandpa abandoned her in Chicago with three children under the age of nine. And she, Regina said, well, if I have to be poor, I also don't need to be cold. <laughs> I love being that. poor in Chicago is different than being poor in Los Angeles. Right. <laughs> so she, she got him to send her to Los Angeles. Um, and then my the kids were raised in the orphanage. So her story about her decisions through the process and you know, she was raised in a lovely, warm family with parents who were just sweet and lovely and took care of the kids and the family was wonderful. And she left that because she believed so strongly that there was a problem. And and I think about that. What does it take to pick yourself up and leave all of that? Because you believe so strongly that it's not it's not safe, mm-hmm. and that's a legacy. You know, uh, I see my mother and my mom and her her two sisters, and they were raised in an orphanage, and how they made their way in the world. So while it's historical fiction in terms of all the history, the story is not fiction. The story is is nonfiction in terms of these women uh, that came through that and, and, and had to survive and make their way in the world uh, on their own at a time, 30s, 40s, and 50s, when women weren't so independent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not like how, it is today. Yeah. How does it how does it impact your life? Because, you know, it's funny. I was just talking with one of my sisters the other day, and we were talking about my mom, how she got divorced from her first husband uh, in the early 70s, like 72, when it was just not heard of at all. And she just put her foot down. She said, no, this isn't the life I want. I want something different, something more. And she did it. And, you know, it, Mm -hmm. it, caused a lot of trouble in the family uh but then I came along which that was a good thing but um but when you think about what members of your family have gone through to change things to be better to have more how does it how did it make you feel as a person it in the early 70s, when, when, then after 72, the women's movement started growing and the National Organization for Women and Women to Be More Independent. I looked at my mom and I said, she was ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. She got a job. I think I was the only kid in my school whose mother worked outside of the home. And she took a lot of grief for that. But my dad was lovely. I, I was blessed with a wonderful family. My mother and father had a love affair till he died. And, but my mom wanted my brother and I to have, have music lessons and to take vacations. And dad wasn't going to make enough to do that. My mom said, then I'll work. And she said, will you do what's right for you, Jerry? Not for what other people think. I love that. And that was my grandmother. 
That's what she was raised with. And my mother sisters were pretty much the same that, you know, you listen to your own drummer. And I listened, you know, I, I saw my mom and I made my own decisions about what was right for me, not for what other people thought. Um, and so I, I cherish that legacy of feminine power. Mm -hmm. It's not about opening doors. You know? <laughs> it's about, you know, respecting other people's opinions as well. Mm -hmm. It's right for me, may not be right for you, but I'll respect you. You respect me. And yes. if you don't, I'm sorry. I love that too. Have you always been an author? I was a journalist. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I was a newspaper reporter. I wrote for the LA times and I wrote for the San Francisco Chronicle, a couple of the publications. Uh, then I became an editor of a couple technology publications because I saw the future of journalism going into technology. Mm -hmm. I said, I better ride that wave. <laughs> Smart. Um, but it was through being a reporter that I came in contact with Sarah Jane Moore, who is the woman, you probably know more about her now, who shot at President Ford in front of the St. Francis Hotel in 1975. And I ended up writing her book, which was nonfiction, Housewife uh, Assassin, oh. uh, the woman who tried to kill President Ford. And I never planned to write a book because Kiki, books are too hard. Yeah, they I know. Take too long to write. I mean, no, thank you. I write <laughs> 1,500 words and I'm out of here. Right. <laughs> I ended up writing her book. Um, and then I didn't have plans on writing any other books. And then my husband and I wrote a book about San Francisco called San Francisco Values. Very positive. Not bad. Positive. And then... I hadn't planned on writing this book until I really sat down and thought about Regina Anasevich and obviously what she means to me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a lovey, she was not a lovey dovey cuddly grandma at mm -hmm. all. That was not her. She was tough, she was independent, she was nice, but she she wasn't the cuddly grandma where you snuggled up in her lap and she gave you cookies. That was not Regina. Right. But that's good. That's what you needed. That's what she, that's who she had to be. Mm -hmm. That's who she yeah. had to be. Um, it was very hard for her to give up her three children. Um, she'd been through so much already. Mm -hmm. And then when she got to Los Angeles, she got sick and she had to have surgery. And she left her old the oldest son, Louie, to take care of the girls. She said, you don't have to change diapers, but you need to be there for the girls. And when the social worker at the hospital said, you know, Mrs. Her name was Bootla. You know, uh, you have children who's taking care of your children. Louie's taking care of the kids. How old is Louie? I think at the time he was 11. He's too young. Not in my country. He's not too young. Well, in this country, he is. Oh. So then they took my mother and her sisters and they put two of them in Vista Del Mar and then my mother was too young and she had to be in foster care. So she went through a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. You know, you can imagine somebody taking your kids away from you because you can't take care of them. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Terrible. Heartbreaking. Yeah. But, um, but she, she toughed it out. Mm -hmm. She toughed it out. And, and her story, the more I knew about her, the more I found out some cousins I didn't know existed. In France, I learned through them, my aunts, uh, I recorded some interviews with my mother about this woman's life and what she survived and how she came through it. And, mm -hmm. and her family blossomed because of her, because she was so tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to read it. I'm reading it. That's what I'm going to do this afternoon. Oh, thank you. Regina thank you. of Warsaw. Where can people go to find out more information about it and to buy the book? You can find it on my website, jerryspieler.com. Okay. It's on Barnes and Noble. It's on uh, Amazon. Uh, you can order it through a bookstore. If you have the name and the title, that's all you need. And you can email me jerry at jerry g spieler i'm sorry at gmail.com i love answering questions i'm 
I'm always happy to answer questions. I've been doing Zoom books, book groups, which oh, is a really? lot of fun too. Yeah. Oh, now fun. we can do book groups all over the place. Oh, I love that. Yeah, oh, I didn't know fun. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. I'm easy to find. I'm very easy to find. Okay, good. <laughs> well, thank you so thank much you, for being you. with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was lovely.